My brother's a soldier. He's actually a lance corporal if we want to be more technical. And he did two tours of Afghanistan. And let me tell you something that was... I'm a bit embarrassed to admit to. I was a bit naughty while he was away serving for king and country, literally risking his life. Do you know what I did every single day while he was in Afghanistan? I'd sneak into his room when my parents weren't looking and I would go in there and I would take my brother's clothes because he had such better clothes. He had more money than me. He wore the trendiest clothes. I would put them on and wear them to college in hopes of attracting a girlfriend, if I'm being brutally honest. But I'll tell you something, every morning when I went into his room to take his clothes, a thought entered my mind. I kept thinking, what if today is the day? I wonder if today is going to be the day we'll get a phone call and Tom won't come home. Now I thank God that he did come home, that he was alive and that he did survive the war. But it is amazing, all those soldiers, all those men over many years who have literally laid down their lives to keep us safe, to look after us. Jesus Christ once said this, Greater love has no one than this, than to lay down his life for his friends. And at the heart of us, that really does touch our very inner spirit, doesn't it? When we watch movies and hear the main character lays down his life to save someone, it does something to us, doesn't it? In fact, I don't know if you've ever seen the 1967 version of The Jungle Book. Here we have Baloo, and Baloo tries to save Mowgli against the tiger Shere Khan, and he actually nearly dies. And when Bagheera, the, the panther, thinks he's dead, Bagheera actually quotes the words of Jesus, Greater love hath no man than this, in that he lays down his life for a friend. But why does that touch us so much? Why does that move us so much? Well, I believe it's this, because at our very epicenter, we love sacrifice. At our very epicenter, we're almost crying out to be saved by someone bigger, someone greater. And we hear it in the music songs. Liam Gallagher famously sung in Wonderwall, because maybe you're going to be the one that saves me, and after all, you're my Wonderwall. We look for someone to save us in romance. We look for someone to save us in our family, in our job, in our career. We want restoration. We want redemption. We want salvation. But the truth is this. All of this points towards the very fact that we do have a greater saviour. The great big God of the universe and since this world and saw that we were sinful. He saw that we were broken and that we needed rescuing. So what did he do? He came into this world and he fed the poor, he healed the sick, he taught amazing things and then he ended up on a cross where he was crucified, where he literally did lay down his life for you and I, because any man, any woman who puts their faith in this Saviour, in the Lord Jesus Christ, can be called a friend of God. And that's the wonderful message of the cross. But hey now, maybe you're thinking, Joe, I feel like you've jumped the gun a little bit. I remember I was once talking about the Christian message with the actor Ian McKellen, you know Gandalf, in Lord of the Rings, and he said, well, first, you've got to convince me that there is a God. So let me tell you why I'm not an atheist. The reason is this, is I cannot explain the conscience. I don't know where morality comes from if you take God out of the picture. If you say that morality is down to the individual, you and I, we create our own moral system. Well, what's to stop one man from saying that murdering is wrong and the other man from saying that helping people is, is wrong as well? Or murdering is right and helping people is right. If we create our own morality in our minds, then morality just becomes a choice. And then you say to me, well, morality comes from a culture. It comes from many different people all coming together and saying, this is right, this is wrong, we need to look after one another. Well, I'll tell you how that goes out of the window when we look at the Nuremberg trials. Again, if I can use another war illustration, at the Nuremberg trials, the Nazi leaders were put under trial for all of their wicked things, for the terrible monstrosities they did against the Jews, where they had many, many millions put to death. But the Nazis, they said, 
Actually, it's sheer arrogance for you in Britain, it's sheer arrogance for you other countries to judge us, because we in Germany had our own moral system. We decided it was right, it was good to kill Jews. What's to say that your moral system is better than our moral system? But then at this point, the chief prosecutor, a man called Robert Jackson, stood up and said, except you know that's wrong, because there is a law above the law. And the Bible says that God has written the work of the law upon man's heart by giving us a conscience. So of course we know that killing Jews is evil. Of course we know that lying is wrong, that murdering is wrong. Of course we know that rape and abuse, all these things are wicked and evil. Why? Because God has given us a conscience and our conscience cries out saying, this is evil. You know what I'm talking about. When you watch the news and you hear these wicked things that happen, it breaks your heart because God has wired us up with a moral system that says this isn't right, this is good and this is bad. And if you ever use the word you should not do that or you ought not to have done that, every time you use those two words you're crying out to a higher power, you're crying out to God. But here's the really important question, why did God give us a conscience? Well I believe one of the reasons is this, he gave us a conscience so it would convict us of sin, so it would show us that we need Jesus Christ. You see, you and I have got skeletons in our closet. Sometimes we do things that no one knows about and yet we feel guilty. It doesn't hurt anyone, but we feel guilty about it. What's that all about? Sometimes we tell a lie to someone and they don't know we've told the lie, but we feel convicted. Sometimes we're hateful, we're nasty, we're rude, we look at things we shouldn't have, and all of these things show us that we're a sinner. And that's why Jesus Christ came into this world. Very rarely will anyone die for a righteous person, though for a good person someone might possibly dare to die. But God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Now perhaps I'm the only one who isn't righteous listening to this, but I think if you're honest with yourself, you're not righteous either. We're not good people, we do wrong, wicked things, we're sinners. But God says, that doesn't stop me from loving you. God says, that doesn't stop me from wanting a friendship, a relationship with you. And so he sent his son, Jesus Christ, to bleed and die on a cross. So yes, the physical sufferings that we see, the, the crown of thorns, the nails through the hands and the feet, the way he was spat on, how he was mocked, how he was laughed at, he was crucified, all the shame of the cross, that was terrible. But the worst bit was the terrors of the cross, the darkness of our sin, of our evilness, of all the sins of the world was laid on Jesus Christ and there he suffered so that any of us who call out to him can be forgiven. Any of us can have a place in heaven because this righteous son of God who died and on the third day rose from the dead, he says any man who puts their faith in me, the risen Lord Jesus Christ, I'll forgive them, I'll wash them white and snow and I'll give them eternal life. It's almost like we have a sort of debt. All the wrong things we've done have been written down, things we've even forgotten about. And this huge big debt, if it was put in front of us right now, I'm sure we wouldn't sleep ever again. And yet this big debt was put on Christ Jesus and then he took it, he removed it, he buried it at the bottom of the ocean the Bible says. That's what happens if we put our trust in him. Our sins can be put at the bottom of the ocean, gone forevermore. And then Christ Jesus can give us his loveliness, his righteousness, his perfection can be given to us as a garment of righteousness. So God doesn't see Joe Kirby anymore and his lies and his drug taking and his pride and all the wrong things he does. He sees the righteousness of the Lord Jesus Christ. By the way, I don't still take drugs in case anyone's thinking like that. But all jokes aside, what goes through your mind as I tell you that? Here is the Son of God who died on a cross for your sins. If you do have a guilty conscience and you know you are a sinner, what's stopping you from putting your trust in him? So when we think tomorrow on Remembrance Sunday all about these soldiers who laid down their lives for us so that we might have freedom, do not forget the Son of God who laid down his life so that you might have freedom and a hope beyond the grave if you come to him and give your life to him.